Now, when we take this back into, um, again, the concept of Zelda, I see this theme of Link encountering people, and the person is holding on to something. And if you remember, what you hold on to is what your mind is. You know, for example, you hold on to your name, you know, and your identity. And these things, you know, there some of them are harder to let go than others, but can be done with enough effort. And, and you might find out that those things. And I see these people holding on to things, and I see Link allowing them to let go. And then they fade away, leaving behind the thing that they thought they were. That they thought they were. The attachment that they thought they were. Hey guys, so welcome back to Game Trip. Um, this game seems to be about two very distinct things right now, at least in the way that we're approaching it, which is death and masks. And by extension, people, because I think the masks are sort of representative of how important the people in this world are and their personal struggles and things like that. Now, we approached death last time as looking at it as this more regenerative thing, you know, by, by disassembling the concept of nothing. This time, however, I want to approach the self a little more. Now, when we were looking at death, we showed that, may, that, that, that there might not be this void in the universe that we think of as nothing. That In fact, it might just be form. Well, this time I want to try and figure out what that form is made of. And on a physical level, that's going to tell us about like where we are in the universe. Um, but on a on a personal level, it, it kind of approaches the ego and the self, which I think is in, important to understanding why these masks are so important. Because masks have always been a deep, deep symbol. I think whenever we look at a mask, it, it conjures up a sort of emptiness, you know, a sort of a funny feeling in the back of the mind. When you, when you see, especially like a dramatic mask that's supposed to really represent something. You know, if you see a room full of people in masks, it's somewhat scary almost. You know, it's, it's unnerving, right? You know, you want, you, you want there to be real people there. You know, there's, there's like a child inside of you that's like scared of that. Or at least me, you know. <laughs> I, may be, I may be projecting here my own symbols. That, that does tend to happen. All right, let's drop the uh, the next one in. But yeah, I think it's important to approach, you know, the nature of, of things as well. So, and this will tie back in again to the to the concepts in Zelda because it it lets me know why it's important to let go, which is what this game is about for a lot of the characters. It's about letting go, letting go of their their desires and the the problems they may have had. Um, Okay, let's go get the rest of the eggs, too. Yeah, we're gonna get the rest of the eggs, too. But, so, yeah, we approached we, we approached the nature of matter last time. Like, what is everything made of? And we found out that, it, that there, everything just sort of had this potentiating state. Like, the universe is full of these, of these fields of potentiation. Um, but for them to be something, they, they sort of have to be existing somewhere, right? And it doesn't seem that that they're necessarily existing anywhere at once except for the entire universe. Like, wherever they are, the universe is, right? Um, which sort of puts the universe in a weird situation because we can't find out what this... We can't go down any deeper. The, the, the literal rules of the speed of light and how fast, you know, or the, the uncertainty principle and, and things like that are kind of limiting us on actually understanding what these things are. It's it's almost like an actual, like, it's like an invisible wall that the universe set up. You know, like how in video games? <laughs> oh, right. Okay, yeah, I did. I got this guy a picture of a pirate. Check it out. Oh, my God. Okay, I'll be right back, guys. I'm going to go to take a dirty picture of a pirate. I took a much, much, much dirtier picture for this guy. It's... Wait. No, no, I want this. Yes, yes. Here, is this dirty enough for you? 
<laughs> oh yeah, that's the one he wanted. I, uh, I don't think you guys could see it. That's probably good. It was a little too dirty. It was pretty graphic, so I went over there and I gave them some Zora dollars and they, you know, they're pirates. They they showed me some horrible, horrible, violent things. Anyway, uh, yeah. Okay, let's go in the water. Yeah, so we were... Whoa, it's really green out here, right? It's super green. Is that the murk? Is the murkiness just... Or is it... I don't know. Why is it so green out today? Anyway. <laughs> Not focus so much on that. Um, okay, we got to go over to the pinnacle rocks here. And you know what? Do, do I have another green potion? I don't think I do. All right. Yeah, but let's get the let's get I'm out of I'm freaking out of magic again. Ah. No. What do I I feel like I need magic to do this. <laughs> I could go back to what's her name's room and get a green potion, I guess. Ah, whatever. You know what? Let's just let's just go for it as usual. Let's just go for it. Oh, I just got returned home. Well, maybe some of these guys will have some magic for me real quick. Sometimes these sandy, sandy fellows have them. Anyway, so what we would be, like, going on from what we were talking about earlier, um, before I had to take the dirty picture, it, we want to know, like, what the universe is made of, but the deeper we, we go, the more it seems to just, there it is, the more it just seems to keep splitting and, and becoming more and more unknowable, you know, our horizons are always receding, right? And we don't ever actually get down to this prime material or prima materia all we seem to get to is form more and more form more and more pattern you know more and more variation and, and it does seem that it's all made of the same stuff quanta it just doesn't seem that we can specify what that quanta is and it's likely that we never really will be able to do it uh from from this perspective it, it, it would be the sort of limit that would undo, you know, the mystery of the universe and what it is and the thing would like, I don't know. It, I mean, it's not like it would fall apart or anything. It's just that the rules are set up to the where it's just it just ain't going to happen that way. Right. You know, which is sad for me as a philosopher, because I would love to know, you know, what's going on with the universe and all that. Oh, I see. I got to take I got to take it to the uh, twin, the the, the, the the pinnacles over here. <laughs> Yeah! Huh. I wonder how you, how you blow up those rocks there. I am running out of time, aren't I? Oh, wait. Yeah, there's a Zora friend here. It's okay. It's fine. What? Oh, right here. Oh, what the... I've got the... Do I need to show it to that guy or something? Ah, I don't know. Oh, I see. I see. I see. This is this is like the entrance. Here we go. Okay, so I just pull out this guy here. Gorgeous. Oh, it's cute. It's like Rudolph, the blinking seahorse freak. I don't know. You have strange powers, Fingal. I have a request for you. Please follow me. Well, that's a weird way to greet somebody. Oh, no, this is not going to be fun. Okay, here we go. Maybe I should just walk. Maybe swimming's a bad call. Uh, we're, we'll just say it's sea currents. Sea currents are pulling me. Oh, yeah, these signs aren't even pointing the right direction. They're just... I guess they're sort of pointing the right direction. I don't know. Anyway, we can't ever get down to this prime material. All we get is pattern, you know? And um, it puts us in a situation where we sort of... It's sort of implied that there is a quanta, that there is a base substance, but we can't get down to realizing what it is because you would need something, again, objective to it. Which makes it hard to say that there is any actual stuff either. Here in the depths of Pinnacle Rock live many dangerous sea snooks. Me and my friend is trapped here. Er, my friend, not me. Fingal, can you please find a way to rid the area of sea snocks? Oh, I've taken the liberty of marking the route. Yes, on your map. I just inked all over it. Came out of my body. 
No rush or anything. I can't wait for you to feed those snee snacks. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, I don't have very much magic. So it, it puts us in this situation of, again, not being able to... Ah! <laughs> I got scared. Ooh. Eh. Oh. Eh. Wasting all my magic. There we go. I got one. Is there an egg in here? There we go. There's the egg. If I have to go back for magic, I'm going to be real upset. Okay, that's one. We got two left. There's sh For sure, there's got to be some magic. Look, there's a pot. This guy's got some pots. I know what you're hiding. Yeah, these look like the snakes from Super Mario 64. Uh, from that wrecked boat level. Okay, there's one. Okay, you just got to be real, real efficient. There we go. You just use a little magic at a time. And no egg. No egg here, but magic? No, a heart. Magic, please give me some magic. Oh, God, a ruby. <laughs> okay. And if we can't find this sort of prime material, it it it, it makes the universe almost seem like a weird dream. Like like what is this this stuff that we're in? You know, it only it only seems to have form and pattern and not much else. You know, um, and it, and it may be that that's all it is. It's just this this generative thing that has no particular state or form, which has I don't know. Uh, this is always, yeah, this is one of those hard things to talk about, of course. Come on, give it magic. Oh, I don't want rupees. I want, I'm out of magic now. Can I, can I even damage them this way? Okay, look, there, there's some pots down there at the bottom. Now, when we take um, this sort of mentality about physical objects, it, 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 it doesn't really do much for us because like, well, okay, you haven't told us what the universe is made of, only that it's pattern and form, right? Um, what does this have to do with the masks? Well, come on, come on. <laughs> These snakes are frustratingly hard while I'm talking. Well, when you take a look inside of your mind, you encounter a similar situation. And um, I think this is because both the mind and the outside world are subject to, to time. Which t time is just change, you know? Without change, time doesn't exist. You know, we could just say that it is change, right? Um, and it's it's a physical structure of the universe, you know? It's something that can be measure measured, right? So it, it has a very sort of real existence, if, if you can define that as real, I guess. But so does the mind. The mind operates in time. And in the same way that you can't empty your mind, you can't hold on to anything in your mind either. If you try to hold on to a single mind state forever, you won't be able to. Eventually, you know, emotions will change it, or, or you'll see something in... Did I get them all? No, I got one more egg. You'll see something in your environment that, that triggers a different thought, or it's... Your thought can never, can never hold to one state. And it's very hard for you to say, okay, well, what, what is my thought then? What, do I have some sort of original thought that, that is the nature of thought, you know, some base thought that's like the, you know, like Plato thought that there was some sort of perfect form for everything? Is there a perfect form thought that, that just is thought? Well, no, because that would just be thinking itself. That's what it is. And you can't, in general, things that are themselves can't see themselves, just the same way that your eyes don't look right, right into the back of your head into your brain and your mind can't look back and see, you know, how it's operating. Um, and that's all really interesting crap, <laughs> you know, but I, I, okay, come on, please be in here. I, oh, one of them ate me. <laughs> you mess with the sea snake. You're going to get the sea, the sea throat. Come on, buddy. Nothing in here either. Dang it. I, I don't. 
Okay. Seriously? We got one more over here. How many of these snakes are there? I feel like I've killed every single one. So when you look inside of the mine, it's very hard. And, and another way to ask this is to ask yourself, who are you? Right? Because that's another thing you have to find. That's another sort of basic structure in the universe that you're looking for. Like a base thing that is yourself. Something you could call a soul. Oh, we found uh, they're mating. They're going to make a bunch of really shiny ones, and the ocean's going to light up all gold. Actually, here's another instance of gold in Zelda. <clears throat> it's popped up so many times, it has to be a theme somewhere. I'm going to figure this out. Thank you, Fingal. This is a symbol of my deepest gratitude. Nice. A fish wish. We helped a fish wish, and we got a fish heart. Now they can have children and then eat them. Because like seahorses do that do that kind of stuff. <laughs> okay, okay, that's the last egg. Uh let's can I just play my guitar underwater? I mean I'm a Zora. I am so glad to be done with this part. I hate collecting the eggs. Now, when we take this back into, um, again, the concept of Zelda, I see this theme of Link encountering people. And the person is holding on to something. And if you remember, what you hold on to is what your mind is. You know, for example, you hold on to your name, you know, and your identity. And these things, you know, they're, some of them are harder to let go than others, but can be done with enough effort. And, and you might find out that those things... This is where the magic is. Magic and arrows and bombs the whole time. Ah. Um. What? And I see these people holding on to things, and I see Link allowing them to let go, and then they fade away, leaving behind the thing that they thought they were. That they thought they were, the attachment that they thought they were, and letting go, going back into the flow, which the flow is what we see needs to be returned in this game. It's the flow of allowing, of allowing and letting go, and letting go of your of your ego, and letting go of yourself and your existence to allow the regenerative process that the universe naturally does, this, this form-producing thing, to continue. And I'm sure there's a much simpler way to say it than the way I am. I'm just, I'm a weirdo, and I have to approach things from a metaphysical standpoint, or I, I don't believe it's true. You know, it's almost like getting all your P's and Q's in order. Good God, all the eggs have been brought together. It's going to start quick to the front of the aquarium. And here's another example of this very regeneration. Okay, we see the children here of, of, the, of the singer. I can't remember her name. Uh, of the singer lady. And the father has died. So there's been a death of the self. Look at this! What does this mean? What in the world could this mean? Oh, it's a song, doofus. I've got it. Don't you understand? The way the Zora children have lined up, it means... <laughs> Fairies! <laughs> Just has a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, let's do this. Oh god, I'm so bad at this. New Wave Bossa Nova, and the song is called New Wave Bossa Nova, representing the new generation, you know, that needed the help of the current generation and produced this song. And I know that the singer says that this is the song that, I believe she says this, this is the song that her grandmother would sing to her. So there's almost this same um, symbolism of reaching into the past to grab something valuable, to produce something valuable and new in the future, represented by these children and their, you know, understanding of the song. Um, kind of a stretch, but I think that I think that it, it it does apply. It's the melody taught by the Zora children that invigorates singing voices. Yes, that's it. It's that instrument. 
Mm, no Zors. These born to teach this song. And then hurry. Lady's like. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh my god, that guy. <laughs> yes, okay. We'll, we'll go play the song. Ugh. But you know what? <laughs> I'm not gonna have enough time. Okay, how far into this episode am I? <laughs> Only 15 minutes. Okay, so I do want to start tackling the temple. Here's the thing, guys. I don't have that much time left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart the days, go get these eggs again, because I'll feel bad if I don't get the eggs, and then we're going to go do the temple. So I'll be right back. Right. <clears throat> okay, we're back, and I have got all the Zoras rescued again, and it is only the afternoon of the first day. Really, like, lunchtime. You know, it's not even, it's not even lunchtime. All right, so now we need to go back to the singer. What, what is her name? I cannot remember. But we need to go let her know her babies is all right. I would feel like a real jerk if I went back after having not rescued the babies and made her think that her babies were okay. <laughs> so I had to go get them all again. Yeah, that's not that would it's not cool in my book. I may be pretending to be her husband, but I'm not a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Get away from me! Oh, I have it too loud on the TV. If I, if I turn it up too loud, sometimes you guys can hear it. Like, doubled. Woo! And I believe she's not even in the thing, right? Isn't she just, like, hanging out outside? Yeah, there she is. Oh, gotta take care of the important stuff first. <clears throat> yeah, I don't have any bombs. Okay. Let's see. Ah, uh, she still doesn't know he's dead. <clears throat> Sad face is trying to tell you something. How about I play you an original? All right, let's try this. It's No, it's um okay. This ah, I'm so bad at this. There we go. She's coming too. And there it is. It restored her voice. I mean, we knew that was going to happen. <clears throat> and we're going into this rock for some reason. Oh, wait. Now we're underwater. Oh, it's a... It's the, that's the turtle. So not only was the song the key to rejuvenating her spirit and her, you know, her her voice, it was the key to saving the whole Great Bay. It was the key to waking up the ancient. So an even further call back to the archaic, like what we were talking about before. Uh, it reminds me of Morla, the ancient one. Mm, yawn, I slept quite well. Nothing matters. I just realized when I opened my eyes, the passing of days is quite quick, isn't it, Atreyu? Yes, Lulu, it's nothing to be surprised at. Even when my eyes are closed in sleep, I still see everything that occurs in this ocean. Uh, of course, the turtle. Timeless, slow, ancient, all-knowing. We have that in Elden Ring as well, I think. It has the same symbolism in Elden Ring. The open seas of the Great Bay are in need of your might. Quickly, climb on my back. All right, we're going to the temple. Okay, 
let's get out the hook shot. Oh, I, my inventory is all bottles right now. Put some more useful stuff in there. There we go. Eh, that's not the one. <laughs> no, you gotta hit the tree. Yeah, you gotta you gotta hit the tree. The temple's gonna be really interesting, and we're we're probably just gonna dedicate a whole episode itself to the temple and analyzing that. <laughs> They're trying to get in, those greedy pirates. <laughs> Team Rocket blasting off again! <laughs> All right, the source of the murky water and likely its purification. Now there's something distinct about this temple as different from the original. Bye. And that's that this looks a lot cleaner than the one we were presented with in um in the original Majora's Mask. So <clears throat> let's just remember that the old one kind of looked more like the paneling on the walls here. It, it was a little dirtier. Whoa, that's a huge water wheel. Looks like it's turning because of the sheer force of the water coming through that pipe. What are you, some kind of engineer? Anyway, uh, I'll see you guys next time on Game Trip. I think we'll call it here, and we'll do the temple on the next episode. So I'll see you then. <laughs>